I'm Boris the Bee Guy, a natural beekeeper from Forest Beehive Apiary, located in the woodlands of central Maine, next to a secluded forest lake and a 3,000 acre state park. Let's explore which beehives are more natural. Conventional vertical hives, also known as Langstroth hives, or European style horizontal hives, such as these widely used Lane's hives. It would seem that the vertical hives follow the natural vertical shape of a tree where the wild bees build their nest. But appearances can be deceiving. Here's a wild honeybee colony living in a natural tree hollow. Here, the tree section with the hollow is mostly vertical. It's about 20 degrees off the vertical line. Here's another feral honeybee colony living in a more slanted tree, 30 degrees off the vertical line. And often, feral bee colonies make their nests in the hollows of almost horizontally positioned fallen trees. Whether the bee trees are fully vertical, slanted, or horizontal, the wild bee colonies living in their natural tree hollows almost always expand and grow from the top of the hollow down, as in the picture. The so-called North European dark honeybees were originally introduced to North America by settlers in 1700s. In America, these bees prospered, quickly spread, and became feral. In horizontally positioned fallen trees with wide hollows, the wild North European dark bees tend to make deep honeycombs, up to 16 inches deep, hanging from the top of the hollow. Having made a single such comb, the bees then gradually built more honeycombs on the sides of the first comb until they have filled the entire volume of the tree hollow. The natural deep up to 16 inches honeycombs hanging from the top of the tree hollow, and especially a horizontal expansion of a natural bee nest to the sides, have a one-to-one -one correspondence to the double-walled insulated horizontal layers hives that were built to mimic how the wild bees live in their natural habitat. These insulated layers hives have 16 inch deep frames that imitate how the North European wild bees build their nests in nature for successful overwintering. And here's the vertical conventional Langstroth beehive. Its boxes stack up vertically in the shape of a natural tree, but appearances can be deceiving. In contrast to the horizontal hives, when the bee colony gets expanded in the conventional vertical beehives, Langstroth hives, such expansion proceeds upwards by adding extra boxes and supers on top of the existing structure. To expand the vertical hive upwards by adding an extra box, the beekeeper keeps switching the top boxes as the numbers on the picture indicate. Vertical hives may have up to six stacked up boxes. The numbers show the original positioning from the bottom. Now, why is it that constant box switching is necessary for vertical beehives? Since in nature, the bees exclusively draw comb from top down, to grow the nest upwards, the beekeeper needs to deceive the bees by separating the two halves of the vertical hive in order to insert a box in between. The bees then will be compelled to fill the empty non-contiguous space that suddenly appeared in their nest structure. In the words of Lazudin, the world-renowned guru of natural beekeeping, the system of management of conventional vertical Langstroth hives is based on a periodic, often bi-weekly destruction of the bee's home and relies on the bee's instinct to restore integrity in their nest. Now imagine that you have a small house with your kitchen right next to your living room, but every two weeks, your crazy landlord keeps rearranging your house such that a new empty space keeps appearing between your kitchen and your living room. You keep rebuilding, reconnecting the living room and the kitchen, but every two weeks, like clockwork, the crazy landlord strikes again, and your living room is again disconnected from your kitchen, and you have to rebuild. Now, wouldn't you be super stressed with this living arrangement and want to get out of there ASAP? Apparently, the same often happens to the bees in conventional vertical Langstroth hives. They are stressed from constant rearranging of their nest and other interventions, and they are far more likely to swarm 
that is to leave, than the bees kept in horizontal hives. But the beekeepers, managing the conventional vertical hives, have another trick that they use to prevent the bees from leaving. Jailing the queen bee behind a so-called queen excluder and creating a kind of a hostage situation. This is completely contrary to nature. And that's why, as a natural beekeeper, I only use horizontal hives. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe.